here at St. Michael at the Northgate Church in Oxford. Warm welcome to those who are joining us at home. Warm welcome to those who are visiting us today. And also, children, could any of you tell me, are any of you going back to school this week? Blessings on the term ahead. One last thing, children, before you go to Children's Church. In this part of the building, we're going to be talking lots about God being our shepherd. That's what all, where all the readings are going. In the old days, and in the Middle East, the shepherds used to go from the front, not at the back. So when we think of Jesus as our shepherd, he is leading us, as well as protecting us. A prayer for children's church. Almighty God, we thank you so much for our children. We pray for those returning to school this week, and for the new term and all that lies ahead with friends and with work. And we pray for them now in Children's Church that they would know the shepherd love of Christ in their hearts this day and all of us. Amen. Amen. Have a lovely time. One of those wonderful Sunday mornings when we have been given an awful lot of pieces of paper and books and there's a particular reason for that. Next week is our civic service in the presence of the Deputy Lord Mayor and various councillors and the free men of Oxford and there we are going to have a go at singing Richard Panchev's responses. Now Richard Panchev is a member of our congregation and a composer of some note if I may say in all, and the choir is going to be with us next Sunday in order for us to be able to have a bit of a go next week, we are going to have a go this week. So when we get to the responses, it's on this piece of paper. And if anybody wants to have a go at singing loudly, Jonathan will kindly act as cantor as well as organist because he's multi-talented and he will lead us in the responses. Uh, I will do the uh, praises, the uh, versicles for them. And when the canticles, there are normal charms, so that's why the Te Deum and the Jubilate are on a different piece of paper. Hopefully this smaller piece of paper will guide us through with all the page numbers and anything we might possibly want. If we get confused, that's totally okay. And um, just try and do whatever your neighbour may be doing. But we remember that we meet in the presence of a holy as well as a loving God. And the two go together. So on page 38, I say these words. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as I here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. <coughs> Almighty and most merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from thy way sight of sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy we have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, 
to the glory of God. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of the sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people in penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, 
beginning at the eleventh verse. <coughs> For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is, that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the country, and will bring them to their own land, and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was, which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. Here endeth the lesson. <coughs> Bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being 
dead to sins should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul.
third lesson is taken from the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 11th verse. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Here endeth the third lesson.
I don't know, maybe it should be. This is the big theme, that God is our shepherd. Two weeks after the great news of Easter, Christ is our shepherd. And in our various readings, we pick up one or two things here. First of all, we note that when what Jesus says is that he is going to protect us from the wolves. I wonder what the wolves are that seek to devour bits of my life and bits of your life. And they may not be the same wolves for all of us, but there will be things, qualities, atmospheres, emotions, occasionally people, whom we sense may just wish to bring us down. And of course, a great feature of the nature of evil is that it devours, it destroys. That's what wolves do. And this is the Jesus who will protect us from the wolves. I find that enormously helpful because sometimes the wolves are too strong for me to fight off myself. This is the Jesus who will protect us, who will keep us safe even from those wolves. And we know that Jesus compares himself to the hireling, so someone who's just there with the sheep for cash, for their own interests. And Jesus is saying, I'm there for the sheep, for us, because I love them to bits. And this is relationship. They know my voice, I know their voice. This is a relationship. I'm not just here for the money. We may then ponder a slightly challenging point in our relationships. There may occasionally be people who would seem to be looking after us and looking out for us, but in a sense maybe it's their own interests they are serving. Let us be alert. Let's also flip around. There may be times when we think we're doing someone a great favour, but maybe actually it is our interest that deep down we are serving. Now I know that we all have mixed relationships and all the mixed emotions and motives in all our relationships. None of us are perfect as Christ is. He is the good shepherd with a capital G. But it's maybe just good to think about those whom we are shepherding to be truly care for them. And also to be thinking about those who seek to shepherd us. Are they truly caring for us? Jesus contrasts the good shepherd with the hireling. Peter, in his epistle, uh, talks about Jesus being a shepherd as an example for us who suffered patiently there on the cross. He bore our sins on the tree for us so that we could be dead to sin and live to righteousness. Were any of us thinking of a little John Ireland anthem at that point? Uh, it's so good. Dead to sin, live unto righteousness. It's great Easter news. But we know that just before that, Peter goes practical, as the epistle writers, the letter writers always did, and talks about if we're just being patient when actually we've done something wrong, well, that's okay, but it's not great. But Christ's patience is when he's done nothing wrong, and that is truly honourable in the sight of God. So if I am horrible to someone this week, and they entirely understandably decide not to invite me for a cup of tea, and if I retreat, if I take that very patiently and nobly, look how, look how wonderful I am, I'm not cross with them at all, well actually it's my fault that they're not inviting me for a cup of tea. And it's good that I'm not cross, good that I'm not taking revenge. But what stands higher in morality is when we are treated unjustly. And when someone accuses us of something we have not done. Or when someone goes out of their way to put us down. And when we handle that with patience, with kindness, with forgiveness, then indeed we are following in the example of Christ. Peter then talks about Jesus being the shepherd and overseer, or bishop, that's a slightly political translation at that point, a shepherd of our souls, and of course the shepherd that again echoes the Old Testament. So let's to spend a few moments, if we may, on Psalm 23. I've forgotten the page number in the prayer but I think it's on our little piece of paper, and if we wish to turn to it, then do so. Psalm 23. This would have been known by heart, by Jesus and by Peter and all those who would have been listening uh, to what Jesus was saying. Some of us will know that I send out a weekly email with what's happening in the life of St. Michael's. If anybody would like a paper copy, there are copies.
is there at the back. If anybody would like to be on that email list, do please say. There is someone who receives it a long way away from here with the same surname as myself, but just a year or two older. And I always love his emails. And he replied on Monday, and he said, and why I like his emails is that he calls me young Buckley. <laughs> that's been a long time since that happened. But dear Alan Buckley, <coughs> it always signs off the older Buckley. So young Buckley, uh, he said, I learned Psalm 23 in the authorised version of this one. I was taught it in Sunday school when I was about seven, and every, uh, or for the rest of the last 70 years, that's giving something away. I hope I've got that right out. For the last many years, uh, Alan has remembered and called it to mind. Psalm 23, lots of people through the years have learnt it by heart. If we're looking for an Easter time discipline, can I commend that to us? The Lord is my shepherd. If, if the Lord is my shepherd, I don't need anybody else to be running my life. The Lord is my shepherd. Therefore, can I lack nothing? But if he's my shepherd, I have to admit I'm a sheep. And to be honest, there are times I must well admit I'm a wolf, because wolves are big and strong and scary, and they can look quite cool. But we are not wolves, we are sheep. And so instantly we have this humility brought to us. If I'm conscious I need to be led, need to be guided, need to be looked after, then I'm like a sheep, and that needs to be okay. And if ever I or any of us get to the point of saying, of thinking or saying, I don't need the Lord to be my shepherd, then we have forgotten that we are like sheep. He shall feed me in a green pasture and lead me forth beside the waters of comfort. There are times when we are called to rest. And the green pasture, the waters of comfort, they, there are times when it's okay not to rush around. And of course it's one of the Ten Commandments and the seventh of our time should be given to being by the green pastures, enjoying what we are given, what we are being given, by the waters, the still waters of comfort. He shall convert my soul, seeking to help me to be led to sin, to live to righteousness, and bring me forth in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I don't know if you've ever represented anybody and whether it was a head teacher at school, or a boss at work, or if any of us are in the foreign service and we're representing our nation elsewhere, and if we feel somehow we are doing that representing well, then part of that is knowing that our boss, our king or queen, whoever it may be, our head teacher, that they actually are being honoured because we are doing things right. I was once, uh, I knew of a head teacher who, uh, I'm not recommending this as an example by the way, uh, a pupil was walking down the road and had one foot on the road, one foot on the pavement. Any of us ever done that in our wild youth? <laughs> so one foot on the pavement, one foot on the road. And Mr. Howe wound down his car window and said, stop stravaging, boy. I don't know if you know the word stravaging, I didn't know it. Before that, Mr. Howe felt that how that boy was walking along the road was not doing his school justice. Now, that's maybe taking a little bit too far. <laughs> isn't it wonderful when we do something well and our employer feels that's rebounded well on the whole institution? Likewise, when we get ever do something kind and loving, just and compassionate, it is for his name's sake, for God's sake himself. I think there are echoes of this in the Lord's Prayer when we say, Hallowed be thy name. That in our behaviour, that can bring honour to God Himself. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We may know that in those parts, the valleys are not only dark and narrow, but they are twisted, and so you cannot see round the corner. And I think when I'm scared of something, it's because I cannot see round the corner. When I'm actually faced face with the crisis, that somehow feels better. But when I sense the crisis is round the corner, I don't quite know what it looks like, then that's when I feel most scared. Even though I walk through the darkest, twistiest of valleys, I need fear nothing, 
because God is with me. He goes with me round that corner. He knows what's ahead. Most of our worries about the unknown. How will I cope when? How will I cope if? And because those things in the future we don't quite know, this is the God who is our shepherd, who walks with us through the narrow and twisty valleys. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. As many commentators have said, actually to be comforted by a shepherd's rod might mean sometimes being hit on the head very gently with it. And so the comfort is encouraging us to get things right. But the comfort also means being surrounded, kept safe. Thou shalt prepare a table before me against them that trouble me. Alongside the shepherd imagery in the scriptures, the meal uh, imagery is huge all the way through, culminating in the Lord's Supper of bread and wine. Thou shalt prepare a table before me against them that trouble me. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Part of this verse is that this is the shepherd who has all the time in the world. Now sometimes when I'm faced with my enemies, I feel I've just got, I've got no time at all. I just need to panic now, because I don't have time to do anything else. This is the God who's got all the time in the world, literally. So he can prepare a meal for us. He can anoint our heads. That's a great sign of hospitality, welcome, blessing, and strengthening. And my cup shall be full. If ever we are feeling a bit panicky, this is the God who truly has all the time in the world, who continues to nourish us, feed us, look after us. But thy loving kindness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now commentators have wondered if this is just a looking to how David will honour being in a place of worship. Uh, when the temple is going to be built, that's where he would want to be. Or whether it's indeed a glimpse of eternity. For me, not that I'm skilled on these things, I would go for a bit of both. And although in the Old Testament the glimpses of eternity are not often made, I think this is where David is going because of the phrase forever. And also Jesus, the night before he dies, says, in my Father's house there are many mansions. And so we've got the reference to the house of the Lord, the house of the Father forever. Great confidence of David that whatever journey he is on, he will be seen safely through and will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So this day and this week, may we ponder what it means that Jesus is our shepherd. He gives his life for us. He protects us from the wolves. That this is the shepherd who will see us safely through. That it makes life easier for the shepherd if we do remember that we are but sheep. Amen. And so we sing Two, two, four. Lead us, Heavenly Father.
service next week of those put in local authority over us we pray for our King O Lord our Heavenly Father High and Mighty King of Kings Lord of Lords the only ruler of princes who does from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign Lord King Charles and so replenish him with the grace of thy Holy Spirit that he may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way, and do him plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant him in health and wealth long to live, strengthen him that he may vanquish and overcome all his enemies, and finally, after this life, he may attain everlasting joy and felicity, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for those among us who are leaving Oxford shortly for new chapters. We pray also for those among us whose relatives, relative, has moved into a care home for a new chapter. And we pray for all those in need this day, in body, mind or spirit. And those who worry and those who grieve. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Pray together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and more. Amen. Be sit for a minute. I possibly should have said this notice before clumsily trying to address it in our prayers. Many of us will know of wonderful Shirley Beavis and some of Shirley's family are with us today and Shirley has moved from Oxford to be in a care home nearby members of the family. Our love and prayers for her and for all the family. And also joining we think this may be your last Sunday with us. Yeah, uh, it's been lovely having you with us and blessings on your new course and your new chapter, and do keep in touch as best you can. And for all of us, regulars or visitors, we are all very warmly invited to coffee through in the parish room, through there, everybody welcome there. Let's stand for our next hymn, our final hymn, 171, and we're going to leave out the start verses, 171, and hand the God this time.
beginning of our service, we prayed for our children with the school term ahead. Likewise, we pray for our students at the universities for their term ahead. The summit begins this week. And for all of us, the peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you all.